1-0. Driven deep to right field. There it goes. See ya. A monster two-run home run. And the Yankees have come back to take a 6-5 lead. Oh, my. He crushed that. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95-7 The Game. That was the worst moment of the weekend right there by far. I was trying to take my kid out to play some hoops. Yeah. Put the game up on the phone because I'm like, okay, I think I think the Giants might get one. Camillo's coming in. It's 5-3. to three. Got this. And, like, within moments, I'm like, oh, this is going horribly wrong. Yeah. Like, I will give Camillo this. At least at least it was not a slow death. We threw strikes. I mean, my God. That thing was so, like, the right fielder didn't move. No. Didn't move. And no. Then, and then, oh, and oh, that park's hard to hit the ball out of. I've heard that's the case. Um, yeah, that might be a good moment to well, put Lucas's stat up. Did you did, did you read this? I did read it, and then I read it, and I uh, thought, wow, that's alarming. And then Lucas, before the show, said, hey, did you guys read my stat? Yeah, he got really upset. That really he, upset. Yeah, we read your I stat, I gave myself Lucas. a three for my Lucas. <laughs> it's a little mean-spirited. <laughs> you should tell everyone else what the stat is. I'm trying to get We're to it. We're getting there. Yeah. Good Lord. Lucas, here it is. Um... Most home runs by any player at Oracle Park this season. It's got to be all Giants. The leader is Tyro Estrada with three. Three? Mike Yastrzemski with three. I've heard of him. And Aaron Judge. Here comes the Judge. With three. (laughs) Grandy. In Um, his bag. Those are the three players. Tyro's done it in 28 games. Yeah. Yaz in 27. Judge in like 21. Aaron did it in three, although he actually did it in two. He sure did. Although he actually did it in one game and one inning. Yep. Is pretty much what I remember. Number one. So 10 innings of baseball and Aaron Judge is tied My God. for the lead. And, and oh, by the way, obviously that's a three-way tie for first. Tied for fourth with five other Giants. Uh, Juan Soto. Future Giant. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that? With two, we're not doing it. I won't do it. Oh, I'm all in. We're not doing it. We are, you will, and we are. We won't because he's a He'll Yankee. He'll be a free agent. He's not leaving. He's going to show up at the St. Regis. <laughs> and, oh, my God, Juan, Juan Soto is in George's box. Juan Soto had lunch with George Johnson. And then. That's my Susan Waldman. It's pretty I good. I know exactly who Thank it you. is. Thank you. I stand by it. And, and I have another prediction, which is after he re-signs with the Yankees. Oh, God. Uh, you will do a show the next day and go, I'm going to start you a strike, Wani Poo. Here's the strike, Wani Poo. Like. I mean, can we stop throwing these guys strikes? No. You're trying yes. to get them out. Well, you're playing you a can't baseball game. Get them out. Well, then you know what? Let's just leave the league. You know what's better? Should we be done? Light him up, let him charge, and he gets thrown out. I mean, That's the best possible result you can get as a Giants I, fan. It's not going to happen. They're, they're, they're. I know it's not going to happen. They're smarter than that. The well, Yankees. It turns out that oh yeah, the Giants. The Yankees aren't, are smarter than yeah. that. You think you're going to get Aaron Judge to charge the mound? I mean, maybe if you threw at his head, and if you're advocating that, you're actually just a bad person. No, no, I'm not. Like, I mean, come on. I'm advocating to make a Yankee hitter uncomfortable. And if that means you got to throw one in his ribs or throw one behind him, oops. Do something other than here comes the strike, here comes the judge, (laughs) you homer again, we lose. It's because just, that's not working. It's just classic deflection of your of, of anger. Like, and I, I I'm not I, angry. To, of course, I'm you're angry, are. Jeff. I, uh, which is awesome. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Angry, Jeff. That's awesome. Thank you, Jeff. I listen. I I I am as frustrated as anyone, but that is classically getting wrong at the wrong, per- getting mad at the wrong person, and it won't work. Like, I would agree with you wholeheartedly if it would work, but I swear to you, Dibs. If Logan Webb, who throws 87. Well. I mean, that's who was pitching last year when you went on this large rant about dot him. Like, if Logan Webb throws at him, guess what the first thing that's going to happen? He's going to get out of the way because he's got time. Yeah. And if it hits him, he'll laugh. He's bigger than a tight end. He doesn't care if you throw a baseball at his waist. He's Aaron Judge. And all you're going to do is anger the bear 
and that will focus them more. I was listening to Tiger Woods. This is an old, old clip. I don't even know why I went down this rabbit hole over the weekend. But you remember the shout out of the bunker? Hey, it's Tiger. Hi, Tiger. Remember this? Like the greatest shot of all time. What tournament was that? The 200 and something yard shot out of the fairway bunker on the par five where he went for it in two. Um, I can't remember what tournament. But this is way back in the beginning, early Tiger years, when he was at his absolute greatest. I actually I chose a five wood, and I had a good line, so I thought I'd give it a go. Exactly right. This great press conference. So Fred Couples said it was the greatest shot in the history of golf. And Tiger, who spoke in a completely different way back then because he was cocky and confident, he hadn't been knocked down so many pegs like he is now. Is really I haven't uh, yet had a nine iron put through my windshield, actually, <laughs> at this point. And I haven't almost... <laughs> I have an all almost died in a car accident and also a couple times. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, this, this, this guy's sitting there talking about focus and how in pressure moments, and this is what great athletes do and about pressure moments and moments where you are activated by something else. It's easier to focus and therefore it's easier to perform and you can't fake it. You can't show up in essentially on Thursday of a golf tournament just a random golf tournament, and play as well because it just doesn't have that razor's sharp edge. Aaron already showed up with that this weekend. He looked at it as a homecoming. He's a fan of Barry Bonds. He's a fan of this ballpark. He wanted this to be a big deal. And my God, it took him two seconds to make it a really, really big deal and put his imprint on the whole series, the whole weekend, and the whole city. And it sucked. It sucked big time for Giants fans. I don't think there's, in fact, it only to me, it gets worse if you throw a ball at his ribs. It's not going to bother him. It's going to focus him even more. And I know that old style baseball, believe me, we've all been through this, broadcasted in the minor leagues and had all the conversations with all the guys about, hey, they came in here and they're too comfortable, so we need to throw one at them. I, yes, that's an old style, and I've seen zero data that suggests it works. I do know it makes you feel good when you're ticked, though. I'm going to throw this thing off this guy's thigh, and then you watch. Now we'll get him out. No, you won't. No, you won't. But you feel better because you're mad. I would like, here's my question I've got for all of us. What do they do about it? Series is over. What do they do about this? About the fact that you are a second-rate team in a sport where the first-rate teams seem to be dominant? What do you do about that? What do you do about the Giants? Well, what if you're the Giants? Depends if you want to do small things. What, what do you do to fix this? If you're the Giants and you are one of the various Johnsons, you keep making money and you realize that attendance is up and people are showing up. And you're making more money this year than you did last year. And so you just you stay the course. You have a president of baseball ops who's here for three years. You've got a manager who you just hired. And you, you stay the course. I'm asking what you feel. What I feel? I don't, I don't care. I don't care what you think they are going to do. Oh, what I do? What is, would you do? I would remove the president of baseball operations and go about a change in a dramatic way. Even if it doesn't work. I would start making big swings. I would draft more hitters. I would become a real player in the big boy marketplace. And you sent a, a tweet, or not a tweet, but it was a text to our show thread about your feeling of, and I don't want to mischaracterize it, but it seemed like you were saying that you didn't like the feeling of being, uh, I don't think the, the phrase was also ran, but it was uh, no, oh, no, it was a have not. That was great. I, you, text. I thought give, you said give, give him credit. I thought you were talking about the haves and the have nots. Uh, Grand, Grandy wrote that. I get confused between the marks. Mark yeah, with Grand, a C, Mark with a K. Grandy wrote, "I just hate the feeling of being like a have not." The Giants are a have not. I thought that yeah. was you, Mark, not him, Mark. No, I that apologize. Was, that was that was. Uh, but it spoke to me, Mark Grandy, because yeah. that for me is the big feeling right now. Because even though you're in. A big market, and I think we're now market six, depending on if it's radio yeah. or TV, whatever. We're a big market. This is a big team that's won more World Series championships since 2000 than any other team. But it feels like this team 
this franchise right now is more of a have not than they are a have, and that's a bad feeling to have. So what would I do? Mm -hmm. I would set about making sure that we are able to bring in either via trade or drafting hitters or doing whatever it takes to bring in some big-time marquee offensive players that would make it so this past weekend was orange and black and not gray and blue or whatever that color is. Hmm. Because all the excitement in this series, not all of it, but 95% of it, was Yankee excitement. The crowd, the at-bats, the sizzle. It was a Yankee series. Yep. And that sucks. I don't know if what you're saying is all that easy to do. You know, I we can sit here and say, hey, it's time to bring in some marquee free agents. Um, <laughs> so are you rejecting all of their reasoning for why they haven't? They've been at the table with good offers every time. Right, right. So... Do I'm not you, rejecting it. Do you buy or not buy that the ballpark is a problem for power hitters? I buy it yeah. to an extent. So, but I think you have to set about. So, if the ballpark is an issue, and let's just assume that it is, well, now you have to set about a different course to bring these people in. And maybe it's a trade. Pete Alonso is a guy who might be able to be had via a trade at the deadline. The Mets are absolutely sinking, and he's a guy who needs a contract. And I know you don't don't want to talk about Juan Soto in the offseason, but he's a guy that maybe you grossly overpay to bring in. He clearly doesn't have a problem hitting here. And just watching that moment yesterday, and I wonder what old school baseball people think about that, because I'm I'm well beyond the pale as far as like the bat flip, the celebration. Yeah, For who me, cares? that's fun. I mean, who cares? Yeah, yeah. He hits it, he looks, he turns. He throws, he throws the bat, the bat away up in the air. Yeah. like it's an, a live firework on the 4th of July. Totally, yeah. It looked like he, he was at a luau. Triple chest pound to the dugout, yep. a couple of bounces and a pimp, and then we're going to round the bases. If I was watching that as a giant, if that was a giant who did that, that would have been one of the more incredible moments of the year. But instead uh, it was like, oh my God, that was a Yankee. Sure. And the crowd went wild. Because it was, what, 50% Yankee fans? Um, I mean, in that Whatever moment, the number, yeah, yeah. In that moment it, just, it, it felt like 80%. But That gave me, and I think you used the word earlier in the crossover, maybe Goo did, about envy. That gave me big-time envy. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what you want as a fan, right? Jealousy took yeah. over the whole weekend. Totally. It took over the whole weekend, which is something I really, I don't know if as a Giants fan I've ever felt before. I've certainly never felt it as a 49er fan. Because, again, jealousy does not just mean you're having a bad year. No, no, Nobody's the best every year. But um, the 49ers have never really, in my lifetime, they've never, like, wanted for anything. Like, sure, I'd like to maybe win a Super Bowl again someday. That'd be fun. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, they're not. Right. They're Even not, in the Chip Kelly year when they were terrible. Well, that was, yeah, that was junk. But you're not, like, right. something, it, it, like, is fundamentally not available right. to the 49ers. I did feel that as a kid, as a Warrior fan. Like, this is what being a Giants fan right now sort of feels like. And and maybe that's overstating it based on results, but I'm getting, like, Warriors 1980s vibes. And the reason is, is because it's the only other time that as a fan I can relate to the idea of Another team comes to town, and you sit there in the stands and go, wow, look at them. Magic, Kareem, Worthy. Thank you. It's exactly yeah. what this felt like. Yeah. It felt like when I was 11 and the Lakers came to town. And um, the arrival of Steph Curry, for me, has largely meant that th th this city, um, and, and you mentioned its size, and its resources should never feel like that. We should never, ever feel like that. We should never feel like somebody comes in and you're like, right? It's like the minor leagues. It's like somebody who grew up in Nebraska visiting the ocean. Like, wow. This thing is bigger than I thought. Has this thing been here all along? <laughs> Whoa. You know? And totally. that's, that's what it feels like right now when the Dodgers and Yankees come to town. And that's why, and a lot of people are translating that by using the word embarrassing. 
And I don't know if it's exactly the right word because I don't find like the whole process, I don't find things like that embarrassing. It's not embarrassing, but there's a word that's at least related to that. And and the best I can come up with now is, is jealousy. But there's another word that needs to come in there because to feel jealous when your ballpark looks like this and you live on the coast in California and you've won championships in recent memory, that's a weird feeling to feel. And so that that's kind of where I'm at with this. Like the, a, a Giants fan should never, ever be looking at opponents coming in and being like, ooh, I want some of that. The you-know-whats are in town. Yep. I don't care who the hell's in town. You should be the ticket. You should be the ticket. There should never be dynamic pricing in San Francisco. Ooh, the Cubs are coming. Yay. You are the ticket. And and that's kind of the issue to me. The issue is not the standings. It's not all of the players and all of that. Like, there's some good players. Some good players. It's nobody who stands out as generational. But if we really, like, put our anger away for a second, you won't look at the Giants organization and be like, well, this is just the blind leading the blind. No, like, Bob Melvin's your manager. You're at third and king. you got a beautiful ballpark. You, like, it's not all, you know, there's some positivity to some of the things that have happened this year. But the problem is, is somewhere along the line, the way that the team's been run, whether it's analytics, whether it's trying to save dollars, whether it's trying to be smarter than everyone else and trying to erase the recent success of the past. Add all those things together, and somehow it has made the Giants feel a lot more minor league than they are. Yeah, and I think it's because of you know the way the regime has run things. It's been more about smarts and analytics and platooning than it has been about you know putting up the eye popping offensive numbers and I know that they've drafted a certain way and you know Patrick Bailey is a drafted player by Farhan Zaidi and he's probably your best player. So I'm not going to begrudge him for all of his drafting choices, but I think that there's been a certain amount of I don't know if it's hubris or if it's just a miscalculation about what you could do to bring in free agents, but They've been unable to bring in any free agent slugger. And this year you tried, and we all kind of applauded it, the Jorge Soler signing, thinking, okay, what might be, if he has one of his Soler years, maybe he's the guy to break the streak of no 30 run, thirty home run hitter since Barry Bonds, and now you watch him day in and day out, and it's like, oh, my God, this guy is hes overmatched. Yep. He's overmatched or injured or terrible or all the above, and – you look at, you know, forget Philadelphia and New York, two of the best teams in baseball, but in general, you don't look at this lineup and think, all right, I got to stay tuned because there's a home run coming right around the corner. No, no. I mean, Solaire was never going to be at the level of those other people that you were that, that No, you were but chasing. could you hit, I mean, 30? We thought, oh, 30. Yeah, that was, I mean, he's done I mean, it before. Now, can, done it before. could you hit 20? Did he do it in San Francisco? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it feels like even now to have him hit 20 would be like, all right, he had 20. Where's he at now? Six? Six, I think. <laughs> yeah. It just, it's brutal. And what did they hit as a team in the series? Did they hit two? Two. Both Pay by, the over. Both by the pups. Yeah. So they hit three. Oh, they hit three? Schmidt hit two. Oh, and Schmidt Ramos hit two. Hit one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Schmidt and Ramos. And pay yeah. the over on the uh, Yankee homers. And man, bad wow. beat for you on I the mean. third part of the bet. <laughs> for those who don't know the bet, we, uh, had a, we had a who gets two out of three. The Giants had to hit at least one homer. The Yankees had to hit at least five. So Dibs got the over on the Yankees. I got the over on the Giants. And I laughed out loud when I saw this yesterday. Man, you hate to the see it. The third part of the bet was whether or not Blake Snell would get the 15th out. Would he complete five innings? Yeah. Now, he starts the fifth inning. The Giants are up 3-1, to one, and his curve is dancing. And yeah. I'm like, it's looking pretty good. And then some people got on base, and the pitch count was approaching 100. And I'm like, oh, Uh-oh. boy. So the bases are loaded <laughs> with two outs. And who's he facing? He's facing Verdugo, right? I think he's facing Verdugo, and the bases were loaded with two outs, and his pitch count was right at about 100. And I'm like, well, we've probably arrived. Like, this is going to be this his last it. hitter. He's this either going to get it. this guy out, 
or this guy's going to tank one into Triple's alley and they're going to go to the bullpen because it'll be a 3-3 game. And the answer was neither. He was going to throw the second pitch and come up totally lame and re-injure himself yeah. and walk straight to the injured list. You literally set the over under at 14 and a half outs and he got 14 <laughs> and got hurt trying to get the 15th out. Yeah. This is how this year feels. I threw my hands up. I'm like, of course. Of course. Yeah. Who cares about the stupid bet? Yeah. I'm like, there goes Blake for another three, four, five, six weeks. Right, exactly. On a team that already is down a starter. So now you're going to have, now you're down two starters and you're hoping Keaton Wynn can come back here in the next couple of days. And, you know, Cobb still nothing and Robbie Ray still a month away. And it was Verdugo who would eventually, uh, Double to yeah, right field. Eric Miller yeah. comes in and gives him a cookie. Yeah, and uh, and he and he whacked it into the outfield to tie the game. Yeah. Anyway, just keep throwing the Yankee strikes. You said that this organization has basically run itself on like smarts, right? It's not that smart. That's that's the problem. Is it's not that smart. I get the concept. I get what you're trying to do. Um, there have been times where it played out really well, whether it's 107 wins or some of the fines that you've had um, in the draft or on the open market, whether it's a Patrick Bailey, a Tyro Estrada, a Lamont Wade. There are things like that where your quote-unquote smarts have led to um, – some cool acquisitions. But in the grand scheme, it's not that smart. And so here's what I would say. A, you already know my promise. Um, I don't use the microphone to, uh, to fire people I'm not in charge of. But, uh, but here's what I would say. The, um, the structure needs to change. I do think Farhan makes some good acquisitions. But here's the problem. Farhan has too much say in what goes on on game day. And I think that needs to stop right now. I think that has got to be over. Do not talk to people about who's in the lineup. Do not talk to people about who the opener is. Do not talk to Bob Melvin with your computer to tell him who should hit in the seventh and who should hit in the fifth, who's going to hit in the first, how many different leadoff hitters have we had here in just the last three weeks? So you're right. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. Greg Johnson did a podcast less than a week ago expressing all of his love for Farhan Zaidi and the extension. Plus, Bob Melvin just got here to work with Farhan Zaidi like literally two months ago. So that's not happening yet. Everybody who's got their idea of fire the president, it, that, that we're just, we're not, they're not there yet. But I would say, Dude, you got to get your hands off of the day to day. You got to. You can keep trying to make trades. You're obviously going to run the draft. You can call people up from the minors and send them back down. God knows you seem to love it so much. <laughs> but you got to get your hands out of the cookie jar on game day. Let Bob Melvin and Matt Williams operate the daily strategy of this baseball club, and that right now is the best you can do. You're right, bigger picture, you right, need right. better baseball players. But right now, you got you got to go with what you got, and I'd let Bob Melvin do all that. The answer is 11, uh, as far as how many guys have let off uh, the game in the batting order. They have 11 Thank different God. leadoff hitters. That's got Farhan written all over it. Including uh, Conforto, he's let off. Um, and Luciano's let off. Jorge Soler has let off. Four times. A humongous 30 home run hitting strikeout ground out guy yeah. with no speed. Okay. We're